So, the draw for Dubai has just come out, and the WTA side of things, it's a 1,000 event permanently now. So it's a big, big event, and we've got some big names playing, but we've also got some big names that are not playing in this one. So let's go to the withdrawal. Okay, so these are the players that are not in the draw. We've got Kerber. She's pulled out. Krajikova, the defending champion, also pulling out of this one. Mukova, she's also not going to be playing another event in 2024, which is a shame. Pagula's also pulled out of this one. And Naomi Osaka has also withdrawn from the event. And Rodokanu apparently is also not playing this one either. So she is also out of this event for 2024. All right, let's go have a look at the draw because it is looking stacked. Okay, so here it is. Here is the draw. We've got 16 seeds in this one. Top eight get a buy in the first round. Uh, Sviontek, number one seed, gets a buy in the first round. She'll take on the winner of Stevens or a qualifier in the second round. Then we've got Gracheva taking on Maria. Winner of that will take on either Kalanina or the 15th seed Svetolina in the second round. Then we've got Kazakina, the number 10 seed, taking on Kostjuk. That's a really tough match for Dasha. A winner of that will take on either Zhu or Potapova in the second round. Then you've got a qualifier playing Lynette. Winner of that will take on the number six seed and Australian Open finalist Zhang in the second round. So very fun little section of the draw here. Of course, Fiontek and Zhang are the two big guns that everyone's going to be focusing on. Uh, but of course, last week, we did have uh, a couple of random upsets and also some players in this section pulling out. Players like Svetolina, Kazakina, and Kostyuk last week not performing so well and also Svetolina pulling out. So this section is a little interesting and it depends on the qualifiers. You know, there are some big dangerous qualities that could be in this section, but I don't know. I feel like Sviontek's draw is not terrible. Maybe that Svetolina third round, but after that, she should be okay until she plays Zhang and then we'll see what happens. All right, next section of the draw, we've got Goff, the number three seed, gets a buy in the first round. She'll take on either Mertens or Sharenko in the second round. Then we've got Pliskova versus Zong. Winner that will take on either Kruger or the number 16 seed Garcia in the second round. Then we've got the number nine seed Ostapenko taking on a quali. Winner that will take on either Bedosa or Sun, the wild card in the second round. Then we've got two qualifiers going at it. The winner of that match will take on the number five seed on Shabur in the second round. Interesting draw. Of course, Pliskova, the big dangerous unseated player. Of course, played well last week. Has been playing well the last few weeks, so nobody wants to play her at the moment. We're going to talk about the two big guns with Goff. Of course, not playing great last week, but has been good this year. Jabur has a knee problem. We'll see what she looks like going into this tournament. I uh, wasn't able to play last year because of injury. And uh, Ostapenko, always dangerous Ostapenko in this section. Potentially Bedosa Ostapenko second round is really, really fun. And of course, this section will take on the Sviontek section in a semi-final. So, we go by the big guns, Sviontek versus Goff. Could be a semi-final. It could be Sviontek Jabur. If Jabur does get her knee right, or as most people probably want to see, the most interesting match, Sviontek versus Ostapenko. But, can Penko get that far? Remember, Penko did win this tournament a couple of years ago, beat Sviontek along the way. That was in 2022. So that could be fun. All right, next section of the draw, we've got Sakri, the number eight seed. It's by in the first round. Take on the winner of Sinia Kova or Navarro in the second round. Two players that played well last week. So Sakri, tough start. Then you got Fernandez taking on a qualifier. Winner of that will take on either Paolini or Hadaj Maya, the number 11 seed. Then you got Alexandrova, the 14th seed, taking on a quality. Winner of that will take on either Martic or Dollahide in the second round. Then you got Roos versus Azarenka. Winner of that will take on the number four seed, Rabakina, in the second round. So interesting section. Rabakina, of course. The big gun made a final this week. Uh, as we're speaking right now, she'll be probably playing that final in a couple of hours. Then uh, also won last week in Abu Dhabi. She's playing really well this week. Will she play? I guess that's the question. You know, we, you know, maybe she might not play depending on how she plays, pulls up today. Zachary, of course, dropped out of the top 10 this week. So we've got to keep an eye on her movements this week. Maybe the pressure of not being top 10 helps. I don't know. Adaj Maya played really well in Abu Dhabi. So keep an eye on her. Fernandez played really well last week if you want to go with the unseated players. And of course, Sinia Kova taking out Goff last week. Dangerous unseated player as well. Last section of the draw. You got Von Drusova, the seventh seed. She gets a buy in the first round. She'll take on either Andreva or Stearns in the second round. Nightmare stuff for Vondi if she has to play Andreva. Then you've got Pavlyuchenkova taking on Buzkova. Winner of that will take on either a qualifier, 12th seed Samsonova. Uh, then you've got Kudamatova, the 13th seed, taking on Yastremska. That sucks for Kudamatova. Yastremska, Australian Open semi finalist. Very dangerous matchup. Winner of that will take on either Cannon or Kastea. So it doesn't get any easier. Then you've got Wong taking on Vekic. Winner of that will take on the number two seed, Sabalenka. And we haven't seen Sabalenka since the Australian Open, so that's going to be fun. But Sabalenka, out of the top four seeds, I feel like she's got the worst start. I mean, potentially Vekic in the second round, that could be awkward. Then you've got Yastremska, Kennan, Kudamatova, Kastea, all very capable of playing against Sabalenka. In fact, Kennan and Kastea have beaten Sabalenka in the last 12 months, so that could be an awkward section for Sabalenka. This
this section, of course, taking on the Rabakina section. So we could get Sabalenka Rabakina semi-final. That would be the dream, I guess, for most people to see that matchup. Or we could get Sabalenka Sakri if Sakri gets inspired by uh, dropping out of the top 10 and motivated by dropping out of the top 10. Or you could go Sabalenka Dajmaya if you want to go something a little bit different there. Or if you want to change it up and you put Rabakina in the semis, maybe you put Rabakina taking on Samson over. We did see that last week in Abu Dhabi, and that match has been an interesting one over the time. Or we could be going with Rabakina taking on Vondi if Von Drusova gets good, or maybe even on Draver if you want to go a little bit more random. But man, what a interesting draw for Dubai. It feels a little less hectic early on for most of these players. But the question is, who's going to win this tournament? Who is going to win this tournament chat? It's a 1,000 event as it was last year, and it's permanently going to be 1,000. Sabalenka's coming in with the freshness. Background, of course. I mean, she's in great form right now. Shviontek, if she wins against Rabakin tonight, I think she'll be the favorite for most people in this one. Or maybe Coco Goff if you want to go with uh, someone in the top four. Or it does throw up random champions at times as well. But there it is. The draw for Dubai, the second 1,000 event of the year.